You got a game three between Dignitas and Wildcard, and here is why. Game number two was scrappy, but it was defined by Team Luke's presence throughout the entire game from the bot lane. My name's TJ, joined by Matt Nymperia, Clint Daniel, as we take a look at, well, what really set the pace for an entire game of nonsense. Yeah, it was like this level four mid lane gank from the bottom lane that turned into a full 4v4 team fight. It's beautiful. Uh, we, well, I think we skipped over the four-man invade in the jungle to get rather <laughs> yeah. late game when it did look like Dignitas were turning things back around. You had a number of good team fights from Lorlo and Spawn in particular. Yasui really looked like they were picking up steam. And I would say this was the nail in the coffin, this particular team fight where Team Luke was able to get what should have been a Penta kill denied <laughs> at the very last moment. Zeno. Zeno as we did wrap things up uh, with a pretty little bow that looks like this. Lorlo even now getting the last word, but Wildcard were able to push this fight all the way through to a game end, and yes, a game three in our first best of three of the evening. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one, TJ, because that was an absolutely bonkers game precipitated by Wildcard. So I'm just going through my notes here. Uh, and trying to sum up all of the events for the first 18 minutes. I'm using my Samsung phone that's powered by Verizon Wireless. You can see that right up there. Um, He's so good. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how that happened. Because Wildcard started off with, like, these crazy plays. I'm going to list off what happened in the first 10 minutes of the game. You had Team Luke and Daption roam up mid. Team Luke and Daption start the dragon by themselves. Team Luke and Daption back, go back mid. And then there's a team fight where they steal the red away from Dignitas and like the Raptors too. And the Raptors then were important. that's mm -hmm. the second Drake. And then Dignitas respond with another red steal. I think this was like more plays per minute than anything else we have cast ever. And that you cast momentum... the LPL. So okay, that's I'm. That's fair. I'm gonna call that. I said we. Um, so, right as a duo, got it. Yeah, I think I think the big thing for me is just wild cards set across so many events in motion that allowed them to keep control of the game. And yes, they weren't getting these huge gold leads off those plays, but they were getting tempo leads, and they were able to set themselves up for a happy late game where Team Luke can just pop in and get a penta, sorry, quadra kill, Zeno. <laughs> It's all right that you forgot that he was going to get a pentakill because so did Zeno. So you know, it's all fair. Oh, okay. Um, I want to, I want to, maybe flip the script a little bit there and talk about what didn't happen for Dignitas yeah. because of that early game plan. Because uh, I think that's equally important. You know, so much of game one was decided by the presence of Acadian, and we didn't see anyone chain ganking lanes this game. That was because. Acadian was kind of getting chain ganked, or as ganked as you can be as a jungler. You know, that Hecarim never got off the ground floor. The second the Udyr was online, they were powering it. Actually, kind of before the Udyr was online, they were powering it with the bot lane roam. They were going for those invades. They were denying the counter invades to answer. Uh, we, we had a moment fairly early on where you were saying, you know, despite all the action that's happened, the gold lead isn't that big. And that was true. But all of the gold lead that was there was onto the jungle gap. It was mm -hmm. all onto Acadian kind of falling behind Panda. And it felt like that defined the early game just as much as Acadian's dominance in game one defined that early game. And then we got to see from Panda what we didn't in game number one. And I think this is another important difference is Panda was just going for these crazy flash engages. Like, you know what? They're within a thousand units. I know what I'm going to do. Flash, come here and just sprint at them. And it worked. It worked so well for them because they had that lead. They had that tempo advantage to be able to just send their bear on attack and find those stuns, find those setups, those fights. And it was, I think, important to note that while they weren't crushing every single fight, Team Luke was finding advantages out of every single fight. They were getting gold onto the carry they needed to have gold every single successive fight. And I think that is so yeah. fantastic by that. You're really good at charades. You're like mimes of champion attacks, or what I thank live you, for. Thank you. Um, and I think it set the pace for a game that revolved around the skirmishy team fights because 
then you're not going to get an advantage out of lanes anymore. If your jungler is that far behind, you know, you're always going to be at a disadvantage. So they're trying to take team fights. They're trying to trade around objectives, win through what stands on the map for Dignitas. And they very nearly did, but it wasn't quite enough. You know, Lorlo, Spawn, and Yasui were the core that needed to make that happen. And it didn't feel like they ever had quite enough just in raw stats to win the team fights. Uh, after an early game that didn't quite go their way. Yeah, I think I think what I want to see coming into game number three, I, I cannot stress enough how strong Dignitas were in game number one because they had yeah. this early lead and were able to snowball it into, frankly, just as many objectives as Wildcard were able to in this game number two. And I think the big difference is those early levels, and that's what I'm watching here from Dignitas, because if they can get those early ganks off, if they can be the ones setting the pace, I think game three is going to go a lot better for them. As far as far as draft goes, I'm paying attention to Zeno, um, because I kind of threw a little bit of shade their way. I said Zeno normally plays control mages, so I'm not sure how they're going to do on an assassin. They looked great! Oh, that yeah. was a really good game from Xeno. And so many of those fights, they were playing the role so well. Like, Spawn was playing incredibly well on the Kai'Sa, but we kind of never got that because Xeno was doing such a good job zoning the Kai'Sa, zoning uh, the mid lane presence from the Rise in, in, the, in the hands... Oh, God. In the hands of Yasui. I'm all right. Uh, and that made all the difference in the world, and I want to see more of that aggression. I don't know if... Uh, there's going to be a wide enough pool there for Zeno. I don't know what Zeno turns to in this game. I'm paying attention to that middle line drop. Yeah, I think for me, I'm, I'm feeling like both teams were happy enough with the drafts in both games. I'm wondering if we just see like a triple run back where the first draft is still the same because I, I don't know if there's anything I feel like needs to change for either team. It does feel like it is circumstance that is changing these games. It is who is getting those first ganks off, who is getting the advantages early, who is deciding where we go as as a game. Rather than, hey, that Tristana was really scary, or hey, that Kaisa was really scary. It feels like, yeah. hey, Dignitas was scary, Wildcard was scary. And this, this has been, I think, a really good performance for Dignitas and Wildcard, right? Like, they both looked good this series, and uh, that... That's really fun because we do have a pervasive conversation about NA talent here in North America. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard of it, uh, but I think this this has been a really good series to demonstrate that there are mechanical stars, yes, and you also have these academy and amateur teams working on uh, really fun team play as well. Uh, this stuff that we saw from Wildcard around Panda's aggression is just as impressive as Panda's aggression in and of itself. Uh, so I'm hoping to see some of these players over on Wildcard, you know, make their way up the ranks. And also, uh, we're definitely seeing a demonstration of the stars uh, kind of aligning over there on Dignitas as well. Yasui and Spawn have been really big flags out of this series, just in terms of talent to watch. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I'm hoping we're going to see more of in game number three is attention on Lorlo. I know we've talked about that attention going bot lane to set up Spawn and JJ because Spawn is that consistent carry that we're looking for. But I feel like Lorlo has not gotten to really uh, stretch his stuff this game because we did see in that game number two some really fantastic NAR engages, some really fantastic, well, disengages most of the time because of how the game ended up going. But those were some solid mechanics on display. The early mm -hmm. lane was going Lorlo's way. We just haven't seen anything enabling him further and i'm wondering if that could be a way for dignitas to switch it up focus mid top yeah that's that's something to pay attention to we are heading towards the champion select uh i do have information here dignitas locked in the blue side uh so they will be getting the first pick yet again we're staying exactly the same we could even see exactly the same draft again Go. Triple run back, baby. Uh, also, as a fun note, because it does sound like we have a little bit of time before champ select, I would like to note that I just got a text during the break, Matt. My mother's been vaccinated, so we're having Woo. a great time here. Get vaccinated, folks, if you're nice. eligible. I, I still can't, which is a bummer, because no. I want to go out and, like, do things. Or, like, see my family. You just you just want more keyboards. That's all you want. And I, I feel mean, like you should yeah. be able to order them online. I, I do. 
I do. I build them all. I have oh one I God. need to build still. For Ralph. For, for anyone in chat, Matt's like, he's, he builds keyboards from scratch. He's super into it. I got a new keyboard last week, and I did not tell him about it, and he's, like, seething a little bit. He's holding it against me. I didn't even ask him for advice. Let's head towards Champion Select game number three, as Dignitas are still taking on Wildcard Gaming. All right. Hopefully, they don't get me as heated in draft as you just did about that keyboard comment. <laughs> I shouldn't have provided you. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have. Now I'm, now I'm in the wrong mindset. I'm supposed to be happy for these teams. We have a great series on our hand. Now I'm upset. Um, but we do still have, so far, same bands coming out. That Darius band. Every time I see Darius band, I'm like, I really want to see that player play Darius. And then every time I see the player play Darius, I'm like, that's why it's banned. So... It's yeah. kind of a mixed bag. Quacker, Quacker did get Darius a decent amount during the qualifiers. Like, the people mm -hmm. were giving Quacker Darius. Uh, and it wasn't like we've seen some Darius one tricks just destroy tournament. Quacker's real good on Darius, uh, but I wouldn't say it's like an insane improvement on his reaction. Yeah. So I would say Dignitas could direct that ban elsewhere, but they obviously feel that the Darius is worth continuing to ban out, as is that TF for Xeno. Opposite side, JJ's Thrash is still in the band pool alongside Acadian's Lilia. Seraphine removed in the mid lane, and it's Rel again. The bands are the same, but credit to Wildcard, they're in a different order. Oh, Matt, okay, we're gonna mix different. up. It sure is, what? TJ. That so we got Tristana first pick here for Dignitas. Yeah, which should mean that Hackerum comes out from Wildcard. But who knows? That might be a little too daring. Maybe we just skip ahead. <laughs> Apparently we do, TJ. Hmm. We're, We're changing the order. Thing. We're not seeing the first three be the same this time. So, you know what? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Panda huh. did just have a very good game on Udyr, but they opt to let the hacker room go through. Uh, and it I does indeed look like the hacker room will keep going through. As that, you know, that Volibear could be anywhere, but I assume it's in jungle. Especially as the Narlokin comes in as well. Wild card. Do you get the Zaya? We'll keep our eye on this. Yeah. I really like uh, Team Luke's Zaya. It was one of their stronger mm -hmm. picks, so I'm really happy to see that come out here for Wild Card. Finally slip through the bands. Ooh. <laughs> Nobody wants to know. Nobody gets Silas. Yeah. Sorry. Well, Wild Cards uh, are still sitting on their support pick. So I can only assume that they're looking to grab uh, a somewhat more effective support than has been able to go through the draft previously. I'm looking at that Nautilus and still kind of on the cards. Mm -hmm. um, or it could just be as simply as you don't want to let uh, JJ get Alistair. Uh, JJ is very good as a support and kind of hasn't been able to show that during this series. So we'll see if that changes. Galio gets banned out. Nautilus, Alistair still in the pool is the obvious one to match his supports. Uh, if we don't go straight to the mid line. Yeah. And looking at the bans coming out from Dana's house, good adaptation. It's denying away the Recon priority. You know you're not going to have to ban away this eye. It's already picked. And do the... you ban out? Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you ban, ban out like the Alistair? Okay, yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> sure the do, Alistair TJ. gets removed here. Uh, and yeah. Now, what do you do wild card? With Alistair removed, I would be looking at Nautilus. I don't know how good Daption's Nautilus is. I d didn't get find a whole lot of data for Daption playing Nautilus when I was looking at it. Um, at least in competitive, obviously, playing it in solo queue. Yeah. There it yeah. is. <laughs> Easy prediction there. Good job, TJ. Thanks. Um, so we will be seeing Daption and Team Luke both on new champions this game. Finally, uh, Daption wasn't forced to the very bottom of the support pool, as was JJ. Yeah. Um, th th so this is interesting because I expect, especially apparent with the Zaya, the Nautilus to be doing a little bit more roaming. Mm. Um, oh. Okay. The Braum buffs aren't live yet. Uh, Tristana Braum is fun as a duo. Uh, we get the Azir in the mid lane. Finally, I teased that during drop number one because it does allow Xeno to play very, very safe scaling. Which means that you're going to get a degree of safety there that they haven't enjoyed on either of their prior packs. And that allows Panda to play a little bit slower. And I think that's maybe the wildcard gaming 
uh, game plan for the first couple of minutes of this game. Take it a little bit slower, wait until the mid-game Team Vice play through Team Luke uh, uh, and, and, and the arrival of Panda. Kind of like the Braum here. Um, not only does it yeah. block the feathers out from Team Luke, what it can do alongside that Tristana from Spawn, you've got Hail of Blades, gives you exactly three autos. Braum's passive puts on one stack. Together, it's four stacks if you're following the map. So what it's a really what? quick stun coming out there from Spawn, and that'll enable these really cool all-ins that Tristana can do early, and that was what we're looking for out of a lot of these Tristanas. So Spawn and JJ mixing it up real heavy. Trying to follow on my calculator map, but... I just can't keep up with the speed know, of these numbers. Uh, it's worth noting there isn't a hacker room. Like, at all, fell completely yeah. through the draft here. Uh, which is kind of remarkable. Acadian does have a very good volibear. I remember that from Academy. Uh, but it is obviously a more static pick. It is obviously a volibear as opposed to a hacker room. So you're going to see a little bit less Acadian. Now we're getting in the game. This is for all the marbles, TJ. Game number three, Dignitas versus Wildcard. No Hecarim anywhere to be seen. Truly good. <laughs> I hate that horse. You can tell him from me. I like Lilia versus Hecarim. Double ungulates. Whoa, what? Yeah, it's the... Okay, hold on. King What's an ungulate? I think it's the phylum that both horses and deer are under. Because they've got the same kind of like joints at the ankle. They got hooves. A very defensive start across the map for <laughs> Wildcard. <laughs> Thanks, TJ. Now they'll turn a little bit more aggressive poking. Phylum? Well, doom. Well, yeah, because it Every goes now kingdom, and then. phylum, some, 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 some genus in there somewhere, species. Look, Every it's been a while then. since third grade science, okay? I was, okay, third grade, way to flex on us. When I was in third grade, I was memorizing all the animal kingdoms. That That's was the my test. Math Niberia that was the test. Voice. Well, yeah, but I failed that test, Matt. <laughs> a slow start here. Despite the early game aggression, Nautilus can get a little more spicy, so I was hoping for it, but I kind of leave it. JJ just kind of baiting out that hook. Oh. There goes the engage. The full stun with the explosive charge. Team Luke very low off the back of that. Trying to look for the return. No blade caller available for Luke, so that will be the end of that engage, but that's the power of this lane. Once you get that Q, if Spawn is in a position to follow up, you are near dead. Yeah, the Ignite was burned there as well, so Team Luke couldn't be insta-healed. Just a really, really rough time. The number is added up there. Here's our early game trains. Quacker during game one evaded Lorlo's uh, uh, Meganar beautifully. Set him up for a game of dominance. During game two, ate literally everything Lorlo pressed as a button. Game three, we split the difference. He got zoned off a little more, but didn't need oh. all the buttons. You know what's interesting this game, TJ? Uh, Quacker's going for Conqueror instead mm. of PTA. So previous games was going PTA for those really quick trades. Now looking for longer engagements. Don't know if that's an adaptation to the lane or to the game as a whole. Guess we'll find out. And Panda shows up here at the top side. Shows up the very important phrase, because then he disappears. Oh. Now will emerge from behind, Lorla. Here comes Fano looking for Tiger first. Does find a flash oh. in from both. First blood for Quacker. That was the most synchronized flash engage I've ever seen. Mm. He's juicy. Looks so good, Matt. More importantly, also found the kill. Setting up Quacker for an early start. Doesn't have flash now, but... Does have a kill onto Lorlo, will crash that wave. Lorlo burns TP. I mean, if you're a Quacker, that's what you're looking for, right? You just want to find any advantages in the early game, anything to set you up for the later stages of the game so you can keep Lorlo down, keep him in the position he's been in the last few games. Lorlo is their stable top laner here on Dignitas, but getting bullied here once again. Yeah. 
Lula plays this really well. Like we talked about, he's so good at staying alive in these fights, being stable, but they just checkmated him. There was no way you survived that when they're both willing to blow flash instantly. They zoned him such that there was no way he survived. Now, Panda going to be rotating down into the bottom side of the map. Will be spotted by the corpse of the Scuttle Crab. Doing a lot of work for a dead crab. Keeps Dignitar safe. And that will be all. I'm interested to see how this lane is going to go uh, going forward. I want to see if Team Luke's going to be able to pull off that carry performance in the Zaya. Because again, I mean, this lane matchup is so rough. If Team Luke's out of position at any point, JJ comes in with a single concussive blow, and then the follow-up is massive. And that does get mitigated somewhat as uh, we hit six for Team Luke, and you got that mm -hmm. uh, uh, Feather Storm, right? One of the appeals of Zaya, obviously, is the ability to be a little more slippery. So we'll keep our eye on that, but... Till then, it's certainly going to be something to be worried about, uh, especially as this Drake is up. The Mountain Drake has just spawned. That's why Panda was down here trying to start something up. That's why Acadian is prowling around. It's hard to prowl if you're like a 7,000 pound bear god. That's spoken like someone who doesn't live in California, man. Bears are sneaky yeah. as heck. We don't have bears around you can, here. You can, if you're ever like hiking in California and you see a bear, the odds are you do not see that bear until it is very close to you. <laughs> they are very good at that. Wild right. card. Going for it again, TJ. Yeah. Drake down bottom is getting picked up. Lorlo. Sniffs something in the air. He's like, I know there's a bear nearby. He's an experienced hiker. And as a result, nothing comes from it. Oh! Lord left <laughs> out. He's such an experienced hiker, man. Even has bear spray? I don't know if that works. Yeah. Didn't need I've it. never been convinced of bear spray. Like... I don't like pepper spray works, I believe it, but also I've seen a bear. I don't believe that you could <laughs> pepper spray a bear into not wanting to eat you. That just doesn't seem Make it physically like a thing. And I mean, we know we know from experience that there's no bear spray item in League of Legends, so we know it wouldn't mm. work in practice. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't work for Dignitas here. Uh, that Drake, the first of the game, did go over to Dignitas, worth noting. Traded for the presence in top side. Panda didn't f wind out. Wow. Wind up getting anything. I said wind out, Matt. I'm inventing new phrases. And so the early game advantage on paper goes to wildcard in terms of gold, but Dignitas are doing all right, trading that for a Drake. Oh, they're positioning so carefully. Because <laughs> they know one misstep, they're gone. Um, yeah, the, the one thing I will note is this is a much slower early game from both teams. By this point, in either game, there were at least, like, three or four kills. Several cross-map plays being made. Bot laners becoming mid laners, mid laners becoming bot laners, junglers becoming... I don't know, I guess junglers Becoming still. what, Matt? It's still junglers, I guess. They're coward. They just didn't gank anything. They were just sitting there like, well, there's nowhere on the map for us to go because everyone else is already there. Um, I've wanted to gank bot, but my mid lane's doing that. Unfortunate. Without a bot lane. Okay, we do we do get some action here. Adaption and Team Luke roam up. There was a back that just procced there for Dignitas. They reset their bot lane, bringing them in towards this Rift Herald. Wildcard do no such thing. Instead, roaming their bot lane up here to rush the Rift Herald. Here come Dignitas. Wild card got it down to 3,000 HP. Dignitas looking for a little bit more. There's the engage from JJ. Gets denied a little bit by Daption. Shot Shockwave. One to two. Wild card looking for more. 1,200 HP. It looks like so far Wild card successfully zoned them off. Acadian not going to be able to find the smite, I believe. Acadian gets taken down. Wild card now zoning off, going in for the re-engage stream. Oh, does not land. Yasui low, getting stunned up eventually again by Panda. There's the flash out to safety. JJ finds it out as well. Now Dignitas could find the return, but are not looking for it. They must not have gotten that. Yeah. Or maybe they did and just didn't pick it up. I really thought 
wild card got the smite. Um, nobody gets the Rift Herald as it stands. And indeed, uh, wild card walk away from that with only a minor advantage from the kill they found. It could have been more. Xeno went in there and kind of flubbed a very important ultimate, which is a shame, but mm. wild card play it very well around that. One of the most important things uh, for team fights is nothing goes to plan. And if you're able as a team to be coordinated enough to just say, okay, we can we can save this, we can cancel this. It's very important. Yeah, look at Let me see. Here. Yeah. Smited by, it looks like I... Panda got the 100 yeah. gold off it, so. And just nobody picks it up. Yep. Go for the re-engage instead here in the look as Yasui just makes it out without Panda's uh, reset timer on the stun. <laughs> Thank you, Observers, for the sad panning over the eye of the Herald. Could we... I don't know if it's possible, but there was a moment there at the very end where you could see Panda run up towards the Herald Eye right as it despawned. If we could get a mini replay on that. <laughs> now with the full context, because it looked very sad at the time. You could see him like head up there. He was like, it's time to get the Rift Herald, and then he didn't. Well, very, very traumatic there. Yeah, and I don't want to clown on them too hard, because, you know, it is Game 3 of Proving Grounds. Um, it's understandable that there would be some mistakes just being forced by the stress of the situation mm -hmm. i mean i and think i think even if you know that that's going to happen it might be worth it for you to go for that team fight you're looking for kills you're looking for more advantages than just hey we can push down a tower right now granted i don't know if you'd find anywhere near as much as the plates would be worth from that herald but definitely a calculation that can be made yeah um I, either way, like I was, you know, kind of feeding onto that, I do think it works out all right. Speaking of things working out all right, though, this one. Oh, Xeno over the wall, it does! It works Xeno's great, we're fine. fine. Xeno's fine, don't worry about it. This will uh, be the was... second dragon of the game. So, 2k gold lead so far for wild card. 300, 500, there we go. Smite of the way, and Wildcard will secure that second Drake, guaranteeing that Dignitas don't have that quick path to Soul. And I want to look at where this gold is going, because all of it's up towards that top side of the map on Quacker and Panda, and we have not seen the result of a super-fed Quacker yet this series. We've seen the result of a Quacker doing fine in lane. So I'm excited, because Quacker is great. Quacker has been playing a hell of a Renekton series, so Game 3 is going to be another exciting one. Yeah. Uh, wild card overall, I would define them as in control of this early game. It is, as you were talking about, much slower. There was the unfortunate mistake around the Rift Herald. Um, but they do get the Drake. They are controlling the game thus far with an advantage in top side and a tentative control of the mid lane. Um, it, you, you do need to be wary of Spawn, uh, who has also been playing a great series and is on a decently fan Tristana right now. Especially as this gold lead grows. Keep your eye on that. Kadian goes in for the engage. Panda in a little bit of trouble, but now it's the blue buff in the most trouble. Everyone's health bars uh -oh. are fine otherwise. Teleport comes in from the blue side. Glacier Lorla. Fisher goes a little bit wide. Smite out from Acadian, finds the heal. Lorla with the slam into the wall. Down goes Panda. Daption still up for the time being. Team Luke in. There's the ball, but no shockwave to follow. Yasui low. One more auto from Team Luke would do it. But Yasui still alive, forces out the Feather Storm. There goes Quacker, looking for more, dives out. Ultimate not going to take down the tower there from Acadian. And now Zeno looking for a little bit more. Stride Breaker out. Will be all she wrote from the side of Wildcard. Oh, a dive in forces Zeno over the wall, and we are all right. Wildcard get into a bit of a brawl there in the jungle, but at the end of the day, it is two for two, nothing more. I guess you take those, Matt. I would. <laughs> if I'm wildcard, I'm happy with that. Able to uh, return away this invade that started a little bit rough. Yeah, check out Xeno's play here, because obviously the attention is on Lorlo just arriving and dominating this fight, right? Lorlo goes in. He's been so consistent with those Meganar shoves. Uh, but Xeno lands his own very important Emperor's Divide there, because it just sets up the zoning right. Spawn never has proper access to this fight until it's mm. been traded two for two. Team Luke rightly blowing the ultimate to confirm that kill so we can run back up for Kira Quacker. Almost steps too far forward, but Acadia doesn't get the turret disable as you called out during the fight. That means Wildcard are pretty happy with this. 
It's time, it's time to write home. It's time to say, Mother, I participated in the great battle of the Rift Herald. <laughs> I survived. And now I participate in the jungle brawl as well. All things are going well. I shall return within a fortnight. Exactly. Well, within a League of Legends, but... I don't know. Last game went to wild, man. We could be here that long. True. Lorlo oh is stunned up in the jungle. Xeno's here as well. There's the Shurima shuffle. Panda finds the kill. And Panda just wandering through the jungle towards that top side with the vague intention of syncing up with Quacker. And Lorlo gets antsy, aware that there's going to probably be a play from that bush. Unaware, the play is already waiting for him in that bush. Presses the play button, if you will. Takes a hit. It'll be a turret for turret trade, though, across the map as Spawn is still getting very, very big, man. Yeah, Spawn is Spawn is slowly scaling up this game, and we saw there's there's two ways this can really go. Spawn scales up in time for it to matter in team fights, or Spawn scales up and every one of his teammates is already dead. So far, it's definitely looking like one of those safe scaling games where Spawn's just going to be happy with this, playing safe in the team fights, and will make it to late game to contribute. I think what's very important, though, is whether or not Spawn uh, uh, can participate in those team fights. Mm -hmm. There isn't a whole lot of built in assassin threat. You know, you don't have this Silas or anything like that over on Wildcard. But you do very much have, you know, Azir, uh, Quacker still playing the Renekton. There are things that can threaten Spawn. So th the way these team fights play out in Micro are very important. Zeno. That's why you pick Azir. <laughs> yeah. Zeno has been really good with the escapes on Azir this game. Just found like a few S shaped ones as well. It's the cool S that you write in your notebook. Exactly. Three in the top row, three in the bottom. Something. I've never, I've never drawn them. Drake is coming up. Watch for Quacker roaming up from the bottom line. Rest of wild card here in mid around the Rift Tarot. Rift Tarot has been dropped here by wild card. They're going to be looking to shove this one in. Doing a good job of zoning off Dina Toss for the time being. Oh, wow. So we'll be able to take that one up. And then just <laughs> They're still looking for more, TJ. Back. Hook in. Damshin starting things strong, blows the damp charge immediately onto Acadian. The front line is strong here, but watch oh! out for the damage as Lorlo finds a triple stun. Quacker will dive. JJ low. JJ dead. Very low HP. Team Luke has the damage. Spawn is rooted down. Shockwave Shock. will find revenge, but that is all Yasui can do. Is it is a 2v2 left on the map? Zeno and Quacker rushing down to this Drake, but uh, Acadian's got smite. Yeah, there's a smite still on the board, guys. I don't know about this one. Gonna roam around the side, making sure there's no visitors. Zeno goes out from the pit, a deep dive in, and Acadian just turns onto him. Zeno's gone. Yasui's still alive. Thanks for the leash, say Dignitas. They're gonna be able to pick up two kills and the third Drake of this game. Did his house play that engagement beautifully? The flash away from Yasui basically just saved that fight. You get that stream of shuffle from Zeno. That is a very dead Oriana and then a very dead Volibear. Instead, it was a very dead Azir and a very dead Renekton to follow. Yeah, look at how much damage Spawn does into this fight. Just denying the first attempt at diving him. Quacker gets close, but he's still got the rocket jump flash buying so much time and it does get dangerous around then because you can see team luke doing so much damage but team luke over steps and yasui's able to punish that and then we get the 2v2 skirmish you saw well wild card felt they had to force something i think i kind of disagree with that i think i would have rather wild mm -hmm. card just uh controlled the pit made sure it didn't get taken went for another 5v5 yeah I think even, you know, giving that one up without contesting it, I think would have been preferable. Because mm. that was just not in their advantage any way you slice it. Panda comes in, finds the stun, Zeno's looking for follow-up, but Panda's just chasing it down. Here comes the rest of wild card. Panda, oh, oh, oh. flash stun, follow-up oh, oh, oh. There he goes. Gotta love Lola, uh -oh. especially as it has bought time for the rest of Dignitas to get into position. We are going for a 5v4. Dignitas immediately try to stun up Quacker, but Quacker survives, reads Acadian's position perfectly, and goes for the 5. 
Working for a little bit more. He's already blown the stride breaker. Dashin with the re-engage. There's the three-man shockwave. shockwave. The oh. dunk comes down from Acadian. Finding three. Zeno with the wall to save them for now. But Wildcard still on the back foot. Still running away. Zeno finds it out. But Acadian hot on his heels. There goes the kill. There goes Zeno. Acadian finds it. And Dignitas run it through. The shockwave sets up for Acadian, who absolutely demolishes the team fight. And Team Luke goes from alive and well in the front lines to dead faster than he can ult to survive it. There was no Feather Storm spent, and that will give Dignitas control of this game, tie it up in the gold, give them the advantage in turrets now, and that is so important. That was such a sick team fight from Dignitas. We're seeing both teams on their A game because immediately you think Dignitas gets their top laner caught out. It looks really rough. Then wild cards start going for Ooh. a run. And in comes the shockwave. Look at the onto combo. Three. It's so Boom. good. The fissure behind it as well. And of course, anytime you have that kind of tight shock point populated with bodies with just a Tristana free firing into it, you're having such a good time. Team Luke, as we said, does not have a window between the Glacial Fissure, which was incredibly well-timed as well, to just press his ultimate. There is no frame in which he is not stunned. Uh, not that any League of Legends player would know what that feels like, to have an escape <laughs> up and just not have time to press it because you're perma-stunned. No, never. Doesn't happen to every other game as AD carry at all. I don't play AD carry. I just tank it. Wild card on the back foot here once again. Up in gold, but tempo definitely on the side of Dignitas at the time being with their two dragons to one in that last yeah, team fight. Almost all of that gold is like in, in the top lane, in the jungle. And that's not especially where they need it. Now Panda looking to potentially re-engage, instead backs off. Acadian looking for more. Very aggressive, speedy build coming out here. Chem tank into uh, looks like Force of Nature. Well, no, Team uh, Luke has actually built out a CS lead in the last couple of moments. They were pretty much tied with Spawn throughout much of the early game, but mm -hmm. as Spawn has been focusing on taking turrets, Team Luke has gotten some more CS advantage. So I don't know how that plays out. I suspect the gold is still advantage pretty heavily over towards Spawn, but Team Luke is certainly making an effort still, of course. Uh, in this with itemization as the essence reaver is completed panda <laughs> is so fast i love i love the meta of just like dead man's plate plus chem tank udir i know that's been his build since he came back into meta just seeing him zoom across the map in the cloud rift as well yeah just joyous dj you have, you have to, depending on wild card, they better get the cloud soul, otherwise we're not going to see the fastest uh, uh, panda we could see. Here we go, That's they're, they're kind of zoning for this. They do have some vision. Uh, yeah, this is Drake, of course. It would be soul point if Dignitas got it. Zeno's just up here on the top side, puts down a tower, stop the wave from going any further. Clacker on the flank. Lord low as well. Lord. There's the Dominus. There goes the fight. Acadian dives forward. The Shockwave keeps Spawn and Yasui safe. Meanwhile, JJ goes golden but still alive. Team Luke finds the kill. One for one thus far in the fight. Now Lorlo in trouble at the bottom side of the fight. There he goes. Double kill for Team Luke. Yasui on the run alongside Spawn. Quacker, oh, Quacker. trying to go for the 1v3. Not going to be able to find it. Gets shut down now. 3v3 three three three. versus 3, TJ. It all comes down to this, for the soul, and I would argue for momentum in the game. Dignitas Roma, Hook does land, Daption, blown up though, Spawn is oh! so much damage, a deep dive, Spawn oh, already found the kill, but Zeno gets one, gets two in answer, and Yasui can only find Poke, Yasui cannot get in range of that Azir, and as a result, Dignitas take the kill advantage, but they will not be able to access the Drake. Whew. What a beautiful turn there. A teleport! It's not over, TJ! It ought to be. This is just a setup for the next 5v5, Matt. Oh, no. I not, don't actually not think so we're going to get that. Yeah, I, I think actually 
Dignitas are a little too cowed by that, especially because Acadian was one of the later deaths. They're not going to go for the instant mm. 3v3. Um, and this means Wildcard kind of re regain control of this game tempo. They do get gold lead, uh, and they tie up the Drakes. Looking for a little bit more, though. Dignitas yeah. have been on the front foot in the driver's seat for a lot of this game. Despite the gold lead from Wildcard, like you mentioned earlier, a lot of it's in the top lane, a lot of it's in the mid lane. It has recently moved towards Team Luke. That's what Wildcard have wanted. But for most of the game, Dignitas had their leads in the right places. They were finding the fights they needed to. They were taking the advantage in oh, fights going. that they needed to. Panda so fast, man. <laughs> Did just run over a ward though, so that's all. Uh, but wild wild card are swinging. This is this is a baron, and they know they don't want this game to keep going because, of course, you're playing into Tristana. So oh they're just trying to force it. This uh -oh. is on war. Dignitas know what's up. They died, Team Luke. Team Luke gets taken down. Beautiful stopwatch there from Spawn, who gets stunned. Panda trying to follow it up. The shockwave for dead. safety again. Yasui still alive. However, both AD carries are down. Quacker, Quacker in trouble. In the middle of four, finds a kill. Still alive, thanks to the Conqueror. And now, wild card push Dignitas off once again. And they're turning for Baron. How did they turn that fight? Quacker, two team fights in a row, has saved the day with incredible frontline presence. Team Luke gets a lot of work done before they go down. And the net effect of it, plus some very good backline play from uh -oh. Zeno, yet again, across the last two fights, is a one trade for Wildcard. Unfortunately, they did not have the HP to go for the Baron, nor the confidence to stick around for the team fight. So it will be a full reset. Nothing changes hands apart from some money. I love that they were running purely on adrenaline. They're like, we're going to go for the Baron. We're going to set up a bait. Okay, <laughs> keep walking past it, Panda. Okay, first pass didn't work. Go for a second. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's good that the bait didn't work. I like that their enthusiasm to play forward for that. But if they had gone for that fight, you saw the TP coming out from Warlo in the mid lane. That would have been just a very, very dead wild card. So they realize uh, that, decide to back. Okay, so here, here is your replay of what happened to Team Luke. You can see the full engage. A very, very good call from Dignitas, but Team Luke gets a lot of damage off the spawn, and Panda just flashes right in here. <laughs> Manages to knock him very low. Xeno with a massive Emperor's Divide sets things up for Quacker, who despite being stunned, can just soak up the front line. Stays alive through all of this, and they've won the trade. I was really loving seeing the... Team Luke attempt to run away 1v4 and still almost found spawn. Like, if Team Luke had had the stopwatch there, that would have been potentially a kill. Uh, but as it was, got them low enough, like you said, so that Panda could finish the job. And that really did start off the team fight. So now, off the back of all of that, we're basically where we started. Yeah. We've got a 2k we lead here for wild card, two dragons to two. Yeah, which is not great for Wildcard, because remember, this all started because they were kind of tapping their, their their pocket watches, looking in at spawn and being like, hmm, maybe we don't want this to keep going. A, a sentiment they have preserved. Take a look at that options menu. As Wildcard force in towards the Baron. Now turn the fight. Acadian has to jump out. Here comes Quacker, Quacker. on the side. Has Dominance ready, Quacker. but it's not going in for the fight. Come on, Quacker, Quacker. go! There it is! Quacker finds the stun, then dashes out immediately. Dignitas been pushed back for the time being, I suppose. All right. <laughs> cool. Hashtag shuffle the deck. That's what they should say. That's what the social media person should say every time they post a Xeno clip where he gets the Sharima shuffle. Oh. -ho. I'm figuring it out. I was just, because uh, the reason I like shuffle the deck is because in true wild current fashion, you never quite know what you're going to get out of a team fight. <laughs> Uh, a very a very good call, I think, overall to disengage there, but I would have liked to see them maintain some presence on the map towards that Baron because they need to start it dry now. Uh, you do need to pay attention to the fact that we are only 30 seconds away from the Drake. So you have split objective, and Wild Card don't want to give uh, both objectives over through a single lost team fight, so they are taking their time. Now Wild Card on the defensive. Home base under threat, potentially. But now it looks like everyone's going to be rotating over towards that Cloud Drake. So everyone has really decided, okay, we're done fighting over Baron. Let's try Dragon for a little bit. 
Yeah. And and you just have to be watching spawn in these team fights. As Dignitas tries to set up for, its, for a fight. Will go in. Quacker's very far away. Daption stays ahead of the damage. Here comes Quacker. Quacker, Dominus pop preemptively once again, but all of Dignitas are trying to chase down. There goes Lorlo on the flank. Engage from Daption, finds Acadian. There goes Spawn from the side. Quacker flashes in, finds the stun. Stridebreaker to follow it up. JJ and Spawn in trouble. Team Luke comes in on the bottom side of the map. Panda, last one standing oh. outside of those other two, gets chased out and taken down. The wild card lose everything else, as you said. Dignitas do lose their carry. There is a single-minded focus on Spawn to the detriment of Xeno, who gets hung out to dry. And Spawn does more than enough damage. That will be the third drake of the game passed over towards Dignitas. Soul point. I do think it's worth noting, Wildcard did enough in that fight that they still uh, uh, get some gold onto Team Luke and prevent the whole Baron take. Yeah, this was uh, Quacker again going over the wall, and then you see just the full commit from Quacker and Team Luke. But look at the bottom side of the fight. Everyone just gets blown up because Quacker's their big tank. Quacker is their big threat in this game. Yeah. Well, without, without, with Quacker and Team Luke dead again towards the top side, like, the rest of Wildcard just needed to go with that. They needed to yeah. split off with that. Um, because there's no way to win that fight as Panda plus Xeno like that. That's just unfortunately not winnable at that point, so. Well, I mean, like, I think there theoretically would be, but not with that positioning. Because Zeno, when you're playing Azir, you need to be in the back line. You need to be able to control the positioning of these fights. If you're ever in the front line, it has to be for an ult. That's the only reason you need to be that close or want to be that close. And Zeno just got popped immediately as a result. So, wild card. Big, big, big yeah. stuns found again from Lorlo, a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. As we do get a rather cinematic pan over to the man in question. Um, Lorlo has been doing such a good job this series controlling the fights. There's Panda, fine stun onto Acadian, not exactly the target you're looking for. Dredge line goes out, depth charge onto spawn. The focus is there again, shockwave onto Daption. Team Luke dodges with the ultimate. The car reach him. Quacker, and still up, slammed into the wall. There goes Lorlo into the Zonias. Knockback oh. finds JJ, Xeno low though. Spawn finds the way through, double kill for Team Luke and it's left to a 3v3. They cannot access spawn. And that is killing them in these team fights. Zeno and Daption in trade for Lorlo and JJ. I think a trade Dignitas and Wildcard will both take. And Wildcard yet again bait the Baron. This is just so problematic for Wildcard though because Sp Spawn isn't getting any smaller. You know? Yeah. <laughs> this Tristana is getting scarier and scarier. And they have not been able to reach the Tristan any of the previous fights. Failing a mistake, that's not going to change. And they've been doing this for the last, like, five minutes, too. Because one dragon has already come up, been killed, and is about to respawn in two more minutes. And they're still fighting. They're still going for these engages. They're still coming out of them the same way. Fight after fight after fight after fight. And I don't know if Wild Card are really finding anything from it. The gold lead has shrunk. It's not been overtaken by Dignitas, but it has been falling behind because they haven't had time to do anything in the sidelines. They haven't had time to set up for anything other than these Baron and Dragon fights. Yeah, I mean, Wild Card need a incredible 5v5 victory to get to the next stage. Oh, they do not. Okay. 3,000, 2,000, will be taken, oh! stolen away! Acadian finds it! That's all you need from him in the fight. He gets taken down. Dignitas looked for more. They find the stun onto Quacker. He gets blown up by Yasui. And now Dignitas, happy with their prize, content to back away. That's why I thought they needed a 5v5 win. That's been what Wildcard have been swinging for time and time again. And they do not get it. They go for the Baron anyway in an understandable moment of desperation. And Dignitas Academy are now speeding down the mid lane. Oh my god. Beautiful fight after fight after fight there from Dignitas. And finally, Acadian oh comes in, god. steals the Baron. Wildcard, look for more, TJ. 
Yeah, Panda very low. Will just die to the stacked up bomb. Oh Zeno my should God. follow. This is disastrous. Spawn has arrived. A triple kill for the Tristana. And Dignitas still have the Baron buff. There is nobody to defend. It is just Daption. This could be game. Dignitas looking for a JJ low enough to be taken down, but nobody else in danger of falling at the moment. Dignitas pushed Here through we go. mid lane inhibitor, looking for the Nexus Towers. For this series, Dignitas about to win here in Proving Grounds, their first series. A deep dive in, Daption in with Quacker. Lorlo just denies them. They are both dead. That's gonna be all she wrote. Dignitas Academy take this series two to one over wildcard. Dignitas come in with a beautiful game number three. They knew what they had to do coming into this. The goal was, we've got a Tristana, get her online, see what she can do. And by God, did they. Wow, what a game three. I think that's just the takeaway. Uh, a really, really good series for both teams. Dignitas prove they are ultimately the more stable team uh, I think that is my overarching narrative. You, we could see Wildcar and having these moments of incredible brilliance uh, where they were synced up, going for crazy plays, but Dignitas over the course of all three games looked like the team that was making fewer mistakes, looked like the team that was in control of games when they were ahead and not taking too many risks when they were behind with a plan to get back ahead. Yeah, and I think game three was really cool for me because neither team really had the advantage going into it. And I thought based on game number one, maybe that would mean Wildcard comes out with it. But Dignitas really demonstrated an incredible game knowledge, incredible fight knowledge and macro knowledge. Because they were like, we can afford to keep taking these fights. We can afford to run it back through this time after time after time. Because Spawn's going to be happy with it. And Acadian, what a, what a series for him. Oh, yeah. This part right here, that's the Acadian moment. Well, other than the Baron Steel. But that setup was beautiful and following it up with the Glacial Fissure. Dignitas knew how to play around terrain this series that I think in game three was really one of the game makers for them. That team fight just then, the team fight around the dragon that we last saw, both times it was these clutch moments in these little areas. Yeah, uh, th these plays around the jungler more than anything else like it's it's spawn and it's acadian and that's what you have to walk away from the series with acadian uh oh here it is show me the goods mm. <laughs> mm. shockwave behind it too beautiful from dignitas as Acadian walks away with that, obviously one of the flashier plays of the series, but it doesn't matter if Spawn isn't able to lock, lock down these choke points. It wasn't just Spawn, of course. Lorlo on Nar all three games, finding huge team fight ults all three games. And by this point, we were just in the late game. We were in the Spawn game, baby. He's just doing <laughs> so much damage. Oh my god. Beautiful series there from Dignitas. Game two, I was. A little bit worried for them, but they came back. Mental was not destroyed whatsoever from the side of Dignitas. So, once again, here's the bracket. Dignitas took that series 2-1, so they are going to be making it to round two next week versus the winner of Immortals Academy or EG Prodigies. And we're going to be heading in a moment to No Org taking on Golden Guardians Academy. That will be the second game of the evening. If you thought this one was a banger, I was I was kind of waiting for the Golden Guardians No Org game. That was kind of what I was setting up for. I, I, I expected this one to be closer. I didn't expect it to run that long. Golden Guardians, of course, after a disappointing Academy season, have started to put things back together. They put a lot of work into it, playing even in Tier 2 amateur events, so that they could get those extra hours in, and it has started to look like it's really paying off in their last performance. And on the opposite side, No Org have been dominant all season long. Uh, but before we get to that, Matt. We got an interview, TJ. We got Spawn. I'm really excited. Uh, hey, Spawn, how are you doing? You just oh. won an incredible series. It went all three games. Are you? Is your is your hand still shaking? Are you recovered? Yeah, a little bit. I was, it was a hype series for sure, three games. Uh, it's a lot closer than we expected, but I mean, it's a lot of fun and 
We'll just get better from it. Uh, so that that last game for me was really one where you were just sitting there like, well, eventually, eventually, I'm going to get to carry this damn game. How did it feel to finally get to that last team fight where you just mowed through the entire team? I mean, it felt great. Uh, as the game goes on, the front to back gets easier and easier. You know, I get more items. So as soon as it happened, it felt good. I, w I want to ask you more specifically about that because we saw, especially like in that like five to ten minute period of just back to back team fights, uh, they very clearly had noticed that you were the problem, and there was a lot of emphasis uh, getting to you on the back line. What are the communications like? You know, when Lorlo and and the rest of the team are playing kind of bodyguard for you, how do you communicate that as a team? Does it just happen mechanically? Um, you know, we just want to keep in mind their flank. You know, Renekton was looking to flank. Um, just keep an eye on the flank and just try to front front to back, starting with Nautilus or Yder, whoever comes in first. So I, I've got one last question for you. I don't, I don't know about TJ, but when you have a game like that, because the last, I want to say like 20 minutes of that game were just, hey, I guess we're fighting again. Damn. Fight yeah. after fight after fight. <laughs> and Wildcard was just like, we're going for Baron. And you guys were like, oh, all right, they're going for Baron. We got to stop them. How do you stay in control during those moments when they're trying to put you on your off foot, when you're having to fight every single minute? How do you stop from that, like, snowballing you guys out of control? Um, I mean, we just have to stay calm, just step back for, like, a quick second, be like, okay, guys, you know, let's look for a base, or we're going to talk about the next fight. Just try to stay calm through it. I, I think that's really cool. Um. You guys did just win that series. It was insane. And now you're looking forward to the rest of the bracket. Uh, are there any takeaways from this game that are affecting maybe how you're weighting the amateur teams? Who are you most scared of as we get deeper into Proving Grounds? Um, I mean, I don't think we're really scared of anyone. We just want to play our game. But, I mean, I feel the like amateur teams are good. You know, they're going to give it their all. So, I mean, no game's going to be easy. You know, set. That's really good to hear. Congratulations on your win, and good luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you. He was so calm. He was so much calmer than I expected <laughs> him to be. That is impressive. So he expected him to be like, oh, man, that series. He was like, no. Yeah, we just had to chill, and we knew they were going to be on the flanks. I wasn't worried for a minute. It's the day of the office, so cool. Matt. You know, yeah. you just come in, you win games, goes all, you win it off of the last second Baron seal with your jungler, no follow their ult into the pit in the it's you know, what you expect. That's just what okay, you, you know, he said, I'm going to go all, all and steal it. Yeah, so we do have, like you mentioned earlier, the next series coming up will be No Org versus Golden Guardians Academy. So that's going to be a fantastic one. Uh, yeah, and that'll be kicking off right after this. We're going to take a lightning fast break. Game number one when we return.